Welcome back to Catholic Plus, where we are finding faith in fun. Join me as we mine entertainment for the treasures of our faith to serve you and the new evangelization. Today, we're exploring the Book of Boba Fett, Season 1, Episode 5. If you like Catholicism and Star Wars, click that like button. And if you'd like to see more from Catholic Plus about Star Wars, Marvel, and more, click the subscribe button and tap the bell icon. If you've already seen The Book of Boba Fett Season 1, Episode 5, and you should have because this is a full spoiler video commentary, this episode is basically the start of Season 3 of The Mandalorian. So sit back and let's enjoy together as we mine this episode for the treasures of our Catholic faith. I enjoy how Mando brings in this bounty, and his focus is unwaveringly on his primary objective. He is entirely willing to pass on receiving the bounty here and taking the head of this guy that he killed somewhere else to get the information he needs. They even offer him another job, and he doesn't even address it. He just walks away. But what I appreciate about this is that Mando has focus. He is completely oriented toward achieving his objective, despite additional profits he could make by being sidetracked. What we need to learn from this is what St. Ignatius of Loyola calls the first principle and foundation, and that is that our entire life objective must be entirely focused on God and heaven. Everything else in this life is meant to help us achieve that objective, and everything that prevents us from achieving it needs to be removed. In this case, Mando is willing to pass on additional work for the sake of his primary objective. There is much we can learn from his focus here. As Mando makes his way closer to the Mandalorians, he activates a special vision sensor that allows him to read the signs to discover where to go. The same thing is true of our spiritual lives. We need to learn how to turn on our special vision to see the way to the truth, our Lord, and eternal life. As Mando navigates his way to the substrata of the city and encounters the Mandalorian blacksmith woman known as the Armorer, she inquires how he was injured and he shares that it was the Darksaber. The Armorer asks Paz Vizla to bring it to her to see. The way Paz carries the Darksaber indicates the sacredness of this weapon to the Mandalorians. Now let me pose this question. If we know that the Eucharist is infinitely more precious and sacred than this silly little imaginary Darksaber, and I know I say that with full knowledge of the history of the Darksaber throughout the Clone Wars and Rebels, so I respect that in the storyline, but how often do we treat the Eucharist that we receive at Mass with this much respect? Let alone the thousands of times more honor and reverence than this little sword deserves. I think in our world today, we lack the reverence due to things of true worth. I think we can learn something even from entertainment, like this, about reverence for sacred artifacts. So you see, this Darksaber is the most sacred physical object to all Mandalorians, just like the Ark of the Covenant was to Israel and the Blessed Sacrament is for us Catholics. The Armorer discusses the significance of the sword and says that the one who wields it must have earned it in battle and will be able to rule all of Mandalore. But if someone wields it without earning it properly, it will be a curse to the Mandalorian. I think that's a fair share of foreshadowing for Season 3 of The Mandalorian. We'll see what ends up happening. At this, Mando is invited to join their covert as they rebuild their community. The armorer asks about the Beskar spear that Mando received from Ahsoka, capable of blocking a lightsaber. Her concern is that the spear can pierce Beskar armor and therefore puts all Mandalorians at risk, so she must melt it down. She says Mandalorian steel is meant for armor, not weapons. This also reminds me of the way the Jedi say that the Force is to be used for knowledge and defense, never for attack, according to Master Yoda as he trained Luke in The Empire Strikes Back. This is also true for us, how we may engage in legitimate battle or war, but only as a last resort, and basically in self-defense of a person or a country, not as an unjust aggressor, only to defend against unjust aggressors. Hence the foundation of what's called just war theory that's adhered to not only by Catholics as taught in the Catechism, but also valued by governments and international collectives of countries. 
What impresses me about Mando here is that he is entirely willing to give up this valuable spear based on what the armorer says. His obedience is absolutely impressive. He reminds me here of a priest or religious who commits themselves to obedience to their bishop, abbot, or abbess. The armorer explains to Mando that Bo-Katan acquired the Darksaber as a gift rather than honorably in battle, so her attempts to rule Mandalore were cursed, and the Empire demolished all of Mandalore because they strayed away from the path. The only way the armorer and a few others survived was having been stationed off of Mandalore during the Night of a Thousand Tears, when Mandalore was brought to ruin. This is like how the Jews in the Old Testament explain having been conquered by foreign powers like the Babylonians because they lost the way. Which is a direct phrase used by the Mandalorian. He often says, this is the way. The loss of Mandalore was because Bo-Katan didn't win the Darksaber in battle and the Mandalorians lost the way. According to the Armorer, only those who followed the way escaped the curse prophesied in the Creed. It reminds me of the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD and how only a fragment of the Jews survived, who, like the Mandalorian survivors, were also scattered to the winds in the Diaspora, all throughout ancient Greece, uh, Egypt, and Rome, the Roman Empire which was in place at that time. She asks what he wants her to make with Mando's Beskar spear, and he requests Beskar armor for Grogu because he wants to go see Grogu again. But the armorer explains that the Jedi do not allow for attachment, relationship attachment, which Mando recognizes as the opposite of the Mandalorian creed, which is founded on loyalty and solidarity. In reality, the Jedi are also founded on loyalty and solidarity as well as profound relationships, just not being over attached to those relationships, especially romantically. I think we can actually benefit from the perspectives of both the Jedi and the Mandalorians here. While sparring, Mando says the blade gets heavier with each move. The armorer explains that it is because Mando is fighting against the blade. This is true for us in the spiritual life as well. The more we try to go against God, the heavier our souls feel, and the more difficult it is to do good. Conversely, when we work with God's will, virtue, holiness, and joy come much more easily. She explains that the Darksaber will win if he fights against it. Mando cannot control it with his strength. As Mando struggles, Paz Vizsla sees an opportunity and challenges Mando to a duel for the Darksaber. Mando accepts, and they remove their blaster packs, so a fall will be fatal. As they battle, neither of them seems able to wield his weapon worthily. The whole battle resembles how God allows us to be tried and tempted, even by those within our own clan or home. Mando comes out on top, but the armorer asks him if he has ever removed his helmet, and he must admit yes, which is a direct violation of their creed. Since he has removed his helmet, the armorer says he is a Mandalorian no more, and the only way that this can be remedied is for him to be redeemed in the living waters beneath the mines of Mandalore, which have all been destroyed, so Din Djarin is now again on his own. What's the correlation to Catholicism here? If somebody is excommunicated or a priest does something so severe that he is he's defrocked and unable to use his faculties. This needs to be amended, right? Like, it requires the sacrament of reconciliation, speaking with your bishop or a bishop or the pope, perhaps, to get an excommunication lifted, all this kind of stuff. The whole point is not to ostracize someone, but to help them get back in a right state so that they can be rejoined into the community properly. Mando finds his way back to Tatooine and ends up rebuilding a Naboo starfighter with Pele Motto. Honestly, I couldn't find much Catholic stuff as this whole process other than to recognize that this total piece of junk, like this antiquated starfighter, can be converted and upgraded much like us, even though we are broken and wounded. We may be completely revitalized by the grace of God. Now, if you see some better connections in this whole ship rebuilding thing, definitely put them in the comments. If you're a gearhead, this might be right up your alley, because they end up making the Starfighter look pretty awesome. It even has a mini cockpit where an astromech droid used to sit, now available for a co-pilot. As Mando gives it a test flight, it reminds me of what Han Solo said about the Millennium Falcon. That it may not look like much, but she's got it where it counts. Sometimes, people, maybe even us, approach the mass 
the music, the environment, the singing, and think that the Mass is just an antiquated hunk of junk. What they don't realize is that our faith has got it where it counts, and then some. They're only looking at the superficial level. It is the path to God, to truth, to Jesus Christ, and eternal joy in heaven. Mando gets picked up by a couple of New Republic officers, and he submits to their legitimate authority here until he's given leave to go, while avoiding questions about some previous activity that he had with his old ship, the Razor Crest. Upon landing, he runs into Fennec Shand, who is seeking him out to be some muscle for Boba Fett, perhaps like how Andrew was going to get his brother Peter to follow the Lord. She offers him a generous sum to help, and Mando offers to do it on the house. But first, he has to go visit Grogu. He's a man of honor, willing to help those who have helped him, and he has shown several times that he is not disorderly attached to wealth. He's a man of principles. Another great lesson that we can learn here is that there are many things more important than money, and oftentimes we can't have both money and to do what's right. Mando seems to have a clear sense of his vocation. So what do you think? And did I miss anything? Comment below so that we can share more spiritual insights together. If you're proud to be Catholic and a fan of Star Wars, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the share button below and help evangelize with us. If you want to grow even deeper in your faith, click the link to our sister channel, Passionately Catholic, in the description below. Special thanks to all Catholic Plus patrons who make Catholic Plus possible. To see the thank you gifts you can receive by supporting Catholic Plus, like my book on Star Wars and Catholicism, check out our Patreon page link in the description below. I'll see you again in the next episode, and remember, the Lord will be with you always.